For every game-changing invention that's shaken up civilization as we know it, there's a blueprint for an idea that never got made. For every genius who's changed the world, there's another who will never be noticed. And who knows what might have been if fate had fallen a different way. These are 20 lost inventions that could have changed the world. Number 20. Ancient Aqueduct System Unearthed in Iran Back in 2015, there were construction works being carried out in Iran, and during the process, this extraordinary discovery would be made. It's an ancient aqueduct that included a remarkably smart distribution system for the water that it carried. An aqueduct is basically just the word for a man-made channel that's used to convey water from one place to another. These are often found in the form of a bridge that crosses a gap or a valley. They were a kind of ancient technology that would be developed in the Roman Empire and was an essential part of the growth and progress of civilization. This find in Iran included some super clever stuff. This aqueduct not only transported the water, but it also appears to have cleaned and purified it by a series of pottery crocks. These are believed to have served as a method for removing mud from the water. Although the discovery is known to be from ancient times, the cultural heritage organization in charge of the system was reluctant to offer a more specific date for the aqueduct. They were also unsure as to whether the whole thing would be preserved in place or whether the pieces would be moved and conserve somewhere else. This conundrum, no doubt being driven by the loss of profit that might be faced if a large construction project was halted, all on the account of some old pipes. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Nobody knows what exactly this thing is, but what we do know is it was found in ancient Egypt. Given how forward-thinking and progressive the ancient Egyptians have consistently proven themselves to be, we can only assume that this thing must have some kind of awesome use. For all we know, if this thing had been known about earlier, it might have changed human development as we know it. Something of a lost invention that could have changed the world as it were. Taking a look at it, our educated guess is that it's probably some kind of water filtration, and Lord knows the world needs more of that. As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and give me your opinion about what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. Stanley Myers Water Fuel Cell in an exciting invention that ultimately turned out to be too good to be true, the inventor Stanley Meyer attempted to create a device that would be able to power things like vehicles by using water instead of fuel. If this had been made a reality, you can only imagine how different the world would be at this point. Anyways, this is the water fuel cell, which was part of a design for a perpetual motion machine. We'll take a closer look at those later on. In this case, it would be designed by the American inventor Stanley Meyer. He claimed that the device would split water back into the elements from which it was composed, those being hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen was then a gas that would burn to produce the energy in the fuel cell. Despite a lot of hype about this so-called invention back in the early 90s, it was ultimately proven to have been a fraudulent claim, and it was said that if the thing had functioned, it would have actually violated the first and second laws of thermodynamics. So that's a bummer then. Number 18. Wilhelm Reich's Cloudbuster and Climate Control. Next up in our harebrained inventions list, we have a creation by a man who was known for many things. All of them were unusual, and some were somewhat controversial. Reich invented a machine called the Cloud Buster that he said would harness the effects of subtle energy in our atmosphere. That is the low-level stuff that's happening that we cannot measure, although there is debate over their existence at all in many instances. The idea of the Cloud Buster was that it would use this subtle energy and then, when it was directed at a cloud in the sky, that energy charge would cause the surface tension of the cloud to dissipate, and that would make the cloud evaporate. This was all pretty janky and kind of esoteric, though, and has gone down in history, along with Reich, as being a bit of an oddity. Number 17. Olestra 
Back in 1996, a fat-free version of Pringles would be released in the United States, and all the people who wanted to stuff themselves with gross snacks and bear none of the weight-gaining consequences thought that this was the answer to their prayers. Except that it rapidly turned out to be rather less fun than everyone had hoped for. Olestra was the stuff that was behind this fat-free claim. This was a synthetic fat molecule that had been developed by Procter & Gamble rather by accident when they were studying the different sorts of fats and their effect on infant children. This synthetic substance was found to make fatty acids attached to sorbitol, a kind of sugar alcohol, and this would form a molecule that was so big that it couldn't be absorbed by the intestines, essentially meaning that it was indigestible. So upon discovering a way to make stuff that tasted and felt like fatty food but would not be absorbed by the body like fat, the researchers did a little more tinkering to make it nice and cheap to produce and then it would be announced to the entire world. A miracle fatty food that wouldn't make you gain weight. And it contains no fat, no calories, and no cholesterol. But you know what? When something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Olestra was most definitely too good to be true. This fat substitute substance was soon used to make potato chips, pretzels, and other salty snacks, and it was approved somewhat inexplicably by the United States FDA. Then the problems became extremely evident. It turned out that Olestra actually interfered with the ability of the body to absorb other things as well. You know, vitamins were suddenly inaccessible, as were some other dietary necessities. So they tried to add more vitamins to the foods in order to counteract the problem. The thing is, though, that wasn't the only issue here. As well as being unavailable for the intestines to absorb, those big molecules moved extremely quickly through the consumer's digestive tract, and this would cause some nasty side effects. Customers began to complain in droves that they were suffering from stomach cramps, diarrhea, and something so gross that it should only be whispered, fecal leakage. The manufacturers began to receive thousands of complaints about digestive issues and underwear that was permanently stained bright orange. Ew. Popularity for the so-called miracle product rapidly waned, but the crazy thing is, it is still used in a few products today, and despite being banned in most other places of the world, it's still legal within the United States. Number 16. Chronovisor. This is a bit of an urban legend kind of invention. Well, a religious and Vatican-based legend slash secret. The chronovisor was purported to be a special device which allowed the user to see through time. Now, if this were a genuine, bona fide, legitimate thing, it seems as though it would have been making a whole shed load of money at some point by now. But what do I know about secret Vatican inventions? According to the story, the chronovisor was invented by a Benedictine monk called Father Pellegrino Ernetti. He said to have invented the device and then kept it a secret until the early 1960s when he told a Vatican priest by the name of Father Francois Brunet all about it. He said that he had the assistance of 12 scientists, which included a Nazi one, to make its development. The machine itself is said to have been created from antenna, cathode rays, and different metals that all receive light and sound signals across wavelengths. The claim is that the chronovisor would be used by the group of scientists to witness and document the events of the past, even the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They said, rather conveniently for the Vatican, it should be noted, that they had therefore validated all the teachings of the Bible by peering into their visual time machine. Now, I don't want to poop the party, but if you could actually do this, then the best way to prove that stuff would be to show more people than a bunch of Vatican so-called science people people and a Nazi, and naturally, since they mostly used it to confirm their own biases, how is anyone outside of that circle ever meant to believe a word of it? Sounds like a whole load of cobblers, to be honest, but nonetheless, they went ahead and published what they claimed was a picture of Jesus being crucified. Funny how much it looks exactly like a painting depicting the same scene, or in fact, as many people have since discovered, it is actually a cheap reproduction of a statue from a church in Umbria, Italy. Well, what a surprise. Number 15. Silphium. In ancient Roman times, there were many things that made the civilization so powerful, and one of the most advanced in the ancient world. 
They had scientific discoveries aplenty and many clever inventions that we still benefit from in one way or another today. One of their discoveries, however, seems to have been used so extensively during Roman times that there is none of it left for today. That would be an herb known as sylphium. This is a North African herb that once grew wildly in the Greek city of Cyrene, which is in modern-day Libya, on Africa's northern coastline. A kind of resin that was extracted from the stalks of this herb would be used locally for centuries for dozens of ailments, from fever and nausea through to corns on the feet. But what the Romans used it for was an extremely effective form of contraceptive. It was used for birth control, according to the Roman physician Serenus, by taking a small pea-sized amount once a month to prevent pregnancy. It would induce menstruation in women and prevent pregnancy, and became massively popular as an herbal remedy, and the town of Cyrene would experience a huge economic boom as the result. But in the end, that demand would outstrip the supply, and the plant was more or less wiped out from over-harvesting. It's believed to have gone extinct by the end of the first century AD. Number 14. Tesla's Wireless Power Nikola Tesla was a Serbian-American inventor who lived between the years of 1856 and 1943. He would be best known for his extraordinary contributions to the development of our modern electrical systems. Where Thomas Edison is often associated with the invention of electricity, his work was actually beset with failure. It would be Nikola Tesla who invented AC currents and invented the reliable and safer systems that we based all modern electrical conduction on. Back in the 19th century, Tesla would be working on using radio frequency for electrical transmission. He used two coils to generate high voltage and high frequency currents, and these used a near-field inductive and capacitive coupling to transmit the power between two networks. Tesla demonstrated his wireless power by using incandescent bulbs in a certain proximity of the coil, showing how they could be lit up despite the lack of connected wiring. His research then went on to test long-distance transmission. His experiments did not prove successful in that regard, but he certainly understood the potential for wireless use and predicted how it would work for the internet and cell phones in our modern times. Number 13. Starlight Back in 1990, a British hairdresser turned amateur chemist by the name of Maurice Ward invented a weird sticky substance that he called Starlight. This crazy stuff had amazing heat-resistant properties. He would demonstrate it on the BBC television series Tomorrow's World by coating a raw egg with it and then blasting the whole thing with a blowtorch. The egg inside stayed raw, as it was protected by the heat-resisting starlight, and the demonstration drew a huge amount of interest. Things were different back then. We didn't have the internet, and we only had four television channels. So we were easily entertained and wowed by such futuristic wonders as this. In fact, Starlight was so fascinating that lots of different people wanted to try it out. Its use is in everything from fire protection on skyscrapers to heat shields on spacecrafts. Tests would be carried out by scientists in both the UK and the United States, and these confirmed that it was as heat-resistant as Ward had claimed. Then, despite the interest, he failed to make a deal with any of the interested parties, and in the end, the United States company Thermashield claimed to have acquired the rights in 2013, but as of yet, there is no product out there that is made from this mystery substance. Number 12. Ogle's Carburetor Tom Ogle was an American inventor who really could have changed the world. Well, that is, if his invention had been used instead of the mess that we appear to have gotten ourselves into since. Tom Ogle invented a replacement for the carburetor and fuel pump in his own car and gave his 1970 Ford Galaxy the ability to get 100 miles to the gallon. Now, this is an extraordinary thing by any measure, and today we can only imagine how different the world might have been if cars had been fitted with such efficient devices. Just think of how much less pollution there might have been. Anyway, this would be back in the late 1970s, and Tom Ogle was just 21 years old when he made this discovery 
discovery while tinkering with a lawnmower engine. What he did was create a black box filter that he then attached to his car, which weighed 4,000 pounds and guzzled gas like it was going out of style. This simple contraption, if added to modern lightweight cars, could allow them to get as much as 400 to 900 miles per gallon. He said that the system worked by vaporizing the fuel in the pressurized system, and it would have changed the way that gasoline was used and could have literally changed the world. The device was tested extensively and found to be real and extremely efficient. Scientists confirmed the efficacy of the unit, and Ogle was also checked out by both the United States government and corporate engineers. His invention simply worked. The proposed backers of Tom Ogle's invention all wanted a controlling interest in the young man's patent, and things started to get a little bit heated. Ogle opened his own car center to modify vehicles with the device, but then the corporations began to get nasty. One said that they were developing their own version, so Ogle would not get any of the royalties. He began to spiral into a downward trajectory, and then in 1981, he was shot in the street. But he survived, and nobody was ever caught. In the summer that followed that incident, he then collapsed and died. The ruling was that it was accidental or suicide by overdose of prescription painkillers and alcohol. But there are some people who still believe that it was actually murder. Ogle's invention was too dangerous to the enormous profits of the oil companies, and many of his fans think that he was removed along with the invention itself. And so we've continued to drive fuel inefficient vehicles ever since. Number 11. Flexible Glass all the way back in ancient Rome, there were stories of flexible or unbreakable glass called vitriol flexile. The first description of the stuff dates from the reign of Emperor Tiberius Caesar, who ruled between 14 AD and 37 AD. It is said that an unknown inventor brought the emperor a drinking bowl that was made of this flexible glass, and then Caesar threw the bowl on the floor, and according to the stories about it, it did not shatter or break like glass, but rather it was simply dented. The story then went on to say that when the glassmaker was asked by the emperor if anyone else knew how to make it, the glassmaker said no, and inexplicably, the emperor had him executed. After that, however, there appears to be no known examples of this flexible glass. Nobody knows how it was created, and for a long time it was considered to be a myth. However, there are some science people today who believe that it may have been possible and that they actually had the technology to manufacture such a thing as long ago as ancient Roman times. Even so, nobody has actually figured out how to do it, and so it seems kind of likely that it may have been a myth after all. Number 10. Slute Digital Coding System Next up, we have a story from the world of 1990s technology. Apparently, back in 1995, a guy named Rome Jan Bernard Sloot, an electronics engineer from the Netherlands, invented something called the Sloot Digital Coding System, which was a data sharing technique in which the inventor said he was able to store an entire digital movie file in just 8 kilobytes of data. The reason that this was considered a thing was because it seemed that it would violate Shannon's source coding theorem. This this defined the maximum capacity of data or information that can be sent over any medium or channel in which the higher the SNR ratio and the greater the channel bandwidth, the higher the data rate. Anyways, all brain melting aside, in 1999, just days before Sloot was to sell his invention, he suddenly died from a heart attack. The source code was never verified, or for that matter, even recovered, and the idea has never been reproduced. Number 9. Palladium Cigarette Ever since the 1950s, the tobacco industry has been aware of just how terrible smoking is for people's health. And despite spending some decades denying it all, they still seem to have been looking for a so-called safe cigarette solution to their pretty toxic problems. All the way back in the 1950s and all throughout history since, the search for a way to remove the toxins from cigarette smoke has been underway, largely without any success to be honest. And weirdly, it turns out that inhaling any kind of noxious 
noxious fumes is remarkably bad for one's lungs, especially if done on a regular basis. Who would have ever imagined such a thing? During the 1950s, one such safer cigarette project was begun, and it was called the Palladium Cigarette. The creation of a tobacco company, the idea was to get ahead of the research that was emerging during that period that links smoking to disease. The idea with this was to add something called palladium nitrate to tobacco. This was said to reduce the toxicity of the cigarette smoke without leaving palladium in the bloodstream. In theory, there were fewer tumor-causing chemicals left in the smoke of these palladium-treated cigarettes by combusting the byproducts of the tobacco. Although the company continued to develop the product until completion in 1978, they finally stopped short of manufacture as they were being bombarded with threats from other tobacco companies about the idea that this would imply that their own products were less safe. Well, what a surprise. Number 8. Greek Fire well, this thing looks a lot like an ancient kind of flamethrower, so that's jolly interesting if you like that sort of thing. The Byzantine Empire had a few tricks up their sleeves to protect themselves as they were perpetually under attack from all sides. The use of so-called Greek fire was so effective that its formula was a closely guarded secret that was handed down from emperor to emperor until the empire eventually fell in 1453. Unfortunately, all of this hush-hush secret business meant that that today we modern types have absolutely no idea how the Byzantines made this devastating weapon at all. Greek fire was the most dangerous and effective weapon they had at their disposal and is no small aspect of how the Byzantine Empire was able to last for the 700 years that it did. Incendiary weapons were obviously in use by this point in history. You know, slamming arrows and fire pots being some of the top faves of this very war-greedy era. So the long and the short of it was that this Greek fire, that is the true Greek fire that the Byzantines had, not the feeble inferior version that the Crusaders called Greek fire, was essentially like modern day napalm. And we all know what a great laugh that stuff is. The general accounts of the use of this stuff suggest that it would spontaneously catch fire and could not be extinguished with water. In fact, it would burn ever more vigorously when it came in contact with water and would firmly adhere itself to anything that it came close to. The use of Greek fire seems to have been especially effective at sea, where it was employed to attack naval vessels by being launched in clay pots or in the form of a kind of rudimentary flamethrower. The way to defend against it seemed to be by soaking heavy cloth or leather in vinegar in order to repel the flames. It was stinky, but probably better than being burned alive. Number 7. Heroes Alia Pile this is a simple radial steam turbine engine which is generally considered to be the first recorded steam engine in history, although it was not a useful power source nor directly related to those steam engines that powered the Industrial Revolution. This thing was described by Hero of Alexandria, the ancient Greek-Egyptian engineer and mathematician in the 1st century AD. The uses for the system in ancient times are somewhat unknown. At the time, it seems to have been viewed as something whimsical and more of a curiosity than an appliance that had any kind of practical use. Number 6. Rife Machine Next up, we have an invention that, despite promising many things, actually may be the cause of people not getting the treatment they need and subsequently dying as a result. So, this is probably not an invention that could have changed the world, at least not for the better anyways. This is a thing called a Rife machine, and it was invented in the 1930s. The idea behind it, which is largely unsubstantiated, suggests that cancerous tumors are caused by viruses or bacteria. They are mostly not, and that they emit electromagnetic frequencies. This machine, so the inventor claimed, could produce low-energy radio waves of the same frequency as the alleged microbes in the tumor. He said that sending this into the body would cause the microbes to break down and die. It was completely unproven, and nobody really believed in the claims. But then in the 1980s, someone wrote an article about this old discredited machine and got all the people interested again. The trouble is that there's still no evidence that it works, because it doesn't, and that some people have refused genuine cancer treatments in order to use this piece of junk and then have subsequently died. Seems like a terrible invention and a lot of hogwash that has done more harm than it ever did good. Number 5. Cold Fusion 
Nuclear fusion, the reaction that takes place in stars or in hydrogen bombs, usually takes place at temperatures that amount to tens of millions of degrees. But the theory of cold fusion hypothesizes that this could be achieved at room temperature. In 1989, a couple of scientists claimed that they had done it, except that they hadn't, and the whole thing sort of faded away into history. But lately, it seems that there is a small group of scientists researching this possibility yet again, and this time they're funded by Google. So they may just have the means to see it through. Number 4. Perpetual Motion Despite the fact that the mere idea of a machine that once set in motion would continue forever with no additional energy requirements is an impossibility, it would actually violate the first and second laws of thermodynamics, and it hasn't stopped people throughout time from trying to achieve it anyway. Obviously, everyone would love to find a limitless source of power that a perpetual motion machine would promise. There have been many attempts, and there are basically three different types of these machines. None of them really work, and all for obvious reasons. The first first kind uses the idea that they use the energy from falling or turning, which is less than the energy required to return the device to its original position. But this is a fallacy, as the total energy of such a system is always constant. These have been around since the 13th century, but still have never made any breakthroughs that change the laws of physics, funnily enough. Another type of these so-called perpetual motion machines is that of the closed cycle water mill. In this, the inventor believed that the energy that the water passing over a mill wheel would create would be greater than the energy needed to get the water back up again using an Archimedes screw. Naturally, this too was wrong, as this kind of machine violates the second law of thermodynamics. The third sort suggested that the perpetual motion would be attainable if it were not for such pesky hindrances as friction. The trouble is that although those sorts of things can be reduced, they're never eliminated without using a additional energy, and thus this notion still remains unsuccessful. Number 3. Damascus Steel Damascus steel is one of the most famous sorts of strong metals from the pre-industrial era. It was generally used to forge weapon blades. The process involved a secret technique in which wrought iron was treated in several different sorts of carbon-based materials, and it was then hammered into bars which were exceptionally strong. It's characterized by its extreme hardness and specific appearance, which makes it look watery and streaked. To create extra strength, the steel bar is often doubled over many times until the layers become intertwined, and then that metal is worked to create the blade. Number 2. The Iron Pillar Supposedly somewhere near the airport in Delhi, northern India, there's allegedly an iron pillar that has not one speck of rust. Weird! The pillar in question is in the courtyard of a ruined mosque, where it was first placed all the way back in 400 AD. The six-ton pillar is still mysteriously rust-free, despite all of its advanced years. Although the climate in Delhi is not especially conducive to corrosion, people would expect a little more effects of the years to be present by this point. But there you have it, a pole of mystery. And I mean, really, what better kind is there any ideas go on and give them to me in the comments down below number one archimedes heat ray back in ancient greece archimedes invented a thing that is known as archimedes heat ray this device was said to have burned the Roman ships that came to attack during the siege of Syracuse in 214 to 212 BC. This device was believed to have been constructed from a bunch of strategically positioned mirrors that would reflect the rays of the sun and act as a parabolic reflector and could be directed at the ships and would set them on fire. There's been a whole lot of debate about the credibility of this invention because it doesn't appear in the serving works of Archimedes. However, it would be tested in 1973 by a bunch of science nerds, and they used 70 mirrors that had been coated with copper, pointing them at a plywood mock-up of a Roman vessel, and surely enough, the sunlight caused the boat to catch on fire. That's all from the mad inventors of history. Which of these crazy inventions do you think could have changed the world? As always, let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.